glass enclosed case, like transmit, you know, like the Christmas time, like the shop windows that have this crossing around the edges or whatever. So imagine like an art world version of that, okay? So imagine I need this case. Sorry, I didn't have time to make that for you, but uh, imagine I need this case, this, this glass enclosed case, and uh, imagine. I'm just, you know, I'm just lying here. I'm just, you don't know who I am. <laughs> you don't know where I came from. I'm just, you know, I'm in this glass and close case. You don't know why I'm in this bed of flowers. I mean, you know, I just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, I think this would be good for you, visitor, too, because, um, you know, it's, overflowing with semantic content, you know? It's like, uh, it can absorb a lot of narratives without being, like, restricted to one. Um, it's, you know, hovering in an indeterminate space between connotation and denotation. It's, uh, you know, it kind of plays with the border between the animate and the inanimate. You know, it has just enough transgression to be sexy. It has just enough of uh, you know, ambiguity to be apolitical, very important for visitor two, that it be apolitical. Um, and yeah, it has just enough like estrangement to distinguish it from mass culture, all marked by a high degree of aesthetic entropy, interchangeability, and infinite reproducibility. And most importantly of all for visitor two, it's marked by a kind of a modernist tendency to block out any political context, you know, by using aesthetics to appeal to ideal form because you know I want that for you visitor too because you know after this performance out I want you to go to the bar and I want you to talk to your friends and I want you to be in a good mood, you know? I want, to, I want you to feel like you, you saw a good performance and it had everything that you were looking or you know expecting for from art. I mean, you know, I mean like it has everything ready for your visitor too. I mean it's it's got beauty, you know, I mean, it's, it's very aesthetic. It uh, what else? It kind of um, flows over you without making you have to think too hard. I mean, you really need that. And uh, what else? And it's not political. So, you know, that's what I want for you, visitor, too, because, hey, that's what I'm here for, you know? I'm an artist. <coughs> I'm here to use aesthetics to block out political content. Okay, so, visitor three. Visitor three, um, uh, she wants to show, she wants me to show that I'm human, you know, because after all, that's what unites all of us, isn't it? Yeah, she, she, I don't know, she, she wants me to show that I'm vulnerable, you know, I mean, she, she, she wants to leave this performance understanding a little bit more about who I am. She, she just, she, how can I say that? She wants to feel that she got a piece of me, you know, like, and if she doesn't get that, she's gonna feel really cheated. And most importantly of all, for visitor three, she loves narratives. You know, she thinks like all the information in the world, you know, all our emotions and thoughts and perceptions, they can all be funneled through the structure of a narrative. Emotional story time. That's what visitor three needs. Okay, so now um Visitor four, he's, he's, a, he's always been odd. Visitor four, he's, uh, you know, he's a little alienated, visitor four. I mean, like, you know, he kind of, he always existed at the periphery of any social formation he was part of, whether it was like, um, <laughs> high school or college or, <coughs> excuse me, even now in the art world. I mean, he wants me to do something. An intervention or um yeah, he wants to see me do fuck up shit, is it a fun? He wants to see me like set something on fire or something, you know? Like I mean after all this is performance of it. Oh wait, Matthew, are we going to set stuff on fire? Okay. I'll talk to you about it later. Um so uh yeah, but you know, as soon as I got here, visitor four, 
He knew he wasn't going to like my performance. I mean, you know, there was just something about me, you know, he just, um, just this whole, like, professionalized veneer, like, as, as soon as, you know, I got out here and started talking, he, he just knew I was, it was one of these others, I was, I was never going to do anything too raw, you know, I was never going to do anything to embarrass myself. I was just one of these artists, you know. I just want to be respectable. I mean, Visitor 1 and 2, they're seeking affirmation in art, right? But Visitor 4, he's seeking negation. And as soon as I got out of here, just something in my aura or whatever, he just, he just knew, he, he, he instinctively sensed I was just too integrated, you know, into the system to ever offer that. That, that feeling of, of negation that he's so yearning for from art. I mean, basically, I'm just not radical enough for Visitor 4. Now, Visitor 5... Oh, oh my god. Shit. So 5 is in love. He met her at... Uh, Nicholas's surprise birthday party. Do you know Nicholas? He's, a, he's got that super curly red hair and he's always wearing those vintage 1970s, like very colorful. Sh Anyways, so he met her at Nicholas's surprise birthday party, and uh, you know they were just glued to each other, you know, for, for three hours. They weren't talking to anybody else at the party. Every day. They just, they just had such a connection, you know. And then, you know what she said to him when she got the party? I feel like I knew you before I met you. And then he, he texted her like in two hours, and for some reason she emailed him back. I don't know, she texted in 48 hours. God, it was long. His 48 hours of his life. I mean, you know, he just he can't stop thinking about it, you know? He, he keeps uh, he's telling he's telling his friend about her. There's just something, you know, something about her, you know, something. And the way she carried herself, and something about the way she, she dressed, and something about the way she smoked, even, you know, just, um, she was just so, um, like, French. I mean, she wasn't French. She was Italian, but, you know, Visitor Fab likes anything to do with French people. Les Français n'ont aucune notion de la jugine. En France, il y a l'homme et la femme. Et, et il me semble qu'il n'y a rien entre les deux. La mythologie de la femme française est le résultat d'une société patriarcale. On voit que mon ami a dit que euh, le mouvement féministe en France est, euh, était 21 de, de retard sur les États-Unis. Mais je lui ai demandé, ah oui, mais euh, certaines pensions les plus importantes. Euh, Certains précieux féministes les plus importants sont venus de France. Euh, Julia Kristeva, Simone de Beauvoir, Lucie Ergueré. Mais elle a dit que non, euh, le, le, le féminisme français est une invention américaine. Euh, elle a dit que tous ces précieux féministes français que vous avez nommés euh, étaient méprisés en France, mais idéalisés aux États-Unis. But let's get back to the, sorry for the digression. Let's get back to Visitor Five. Um, yeah, so Visitor Five likes likes French French women, um, and yeah, he only came because you know this this girl, this time girl. Um, she her roommate Elena uh, works for the Tate Modern, or is it the Tate Britain? Uh, anyways, I was getting this too mixed up. Anyways, she, she works for one of the Tates, and they always get like free tickets to performances. And uh, Elena had three tickets, so you know the town girl. She invited Visitor Five. I mean, you know, you know, he's not even paying attention to my performance. You know, he's just he's so preoccupied. You know, I mean, he just um, he's just at that that fragile moment where he's ready to let himself fall in love. You know, and all, all I can think about is like, you know, what's gonna happen? To my performance, you know? I mean, like, did she invite him here, like, as a date, or are like, they just gonna hang out with Elena and her friends afterwards? Yeah, you know, I think this are, this are five. I think he'd be really annoyed if I read a poem like this. Love, isn't it so bored? Slapped onto every pink and purple confetti-like quest 
for, for either advertisement, uh, love. They pick it on sticky valentines and flying fly angels with wings, shooting arrows to get the jewel in the crown step on promotion in emotional resumes. Love was the cheap, facile resolution to how many slip happy past through the intestine with no resistance do wop cheese wop songs, so certain in their crucialness that this was the first testament triumph of a drama honored humanity. So then, why would get one free? Don't be let out and, and left out in the cold of Bob Humbug on Disney glossed happy bounce belief and the magic in your eyes. Yes! Jump on a bandwagon, trump card of love. Its bright, happy ghost solves every dilemma. Love will buy you a house and make you president of the United States. Love will give you tax shelter and be tax deductible. Love will increase your lifespan, make you less likely for lung cancer. And Mrs. Fields will bake you cookies. Love will give you that sexy, healthy, Stairmaster, shiny tan glow. Love will increase your advertising time on Super Bowl weekend. Love, love, love. Intoxicate on its funhouse abundance of tax breaks, finance options, and increased marketability and stuff. You can't miss, my friend. Take a seat. We're all here to help you. Sign up for Love's Glowing, Flowing, Tulip, and Daisy Stuff Down Your Throat, Stranglehold of Compulsory Happy Ending. A crushing of complexity and wounds we all hide inside. User friendly and so personable. Love is a flashcard for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Love is parcel and well scheduled. Love doesn't have that awful aftertaste that leading brands of mouthwash have. Love can be financed at the low, low rate of 5.6% plus 2.1 rebate financing. Birds do it, bees do it, even CEOs, Sonic Sams, and Hitlers do it. Come on, let's fall in love. Okay, oh yeah, that's, that was a little American reference. No one, Son of Sam was a, a mass murder in the 1970s. But he, 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 he was, I'm sure he was capable of being in love also. Um, let's see, so these are six. Don't worry, we just have two more to go. These are six. Um, okay, this is the way I would describe because there are six. Um, so let's say in a house, there, in a house, you, there's certain rooms that you're using that are more central, you're using them all the time, like the kitchen. And there are other rooms that are the more marginal, the more on the periphery, like, like the, the library or something. So imagine if each room in a house represented a part of your life. So, so for visitor six, it's like if each room represented a part of his life, um, there, he had one room for his finances, one room for his career, one room for his family. Um, what else? Uh, well, like another room for to keep track of the Tory government under Blair. And then, I mean, I don't know, I was this room, or, or was this room, he just, he, he never really knew what to do with it, you know, I mean, it wasn't one of the central rooms in his house, but, you know, it wasn't as marginalized as the attic, but I just, you know, it's just one of these rooms, he, he, when he walked by, you know, he, he didn't know, should he go into the room, and if he went into the room, like, how long should he stay in the room, and like, what should he do in the room, and yeah, so that's all I know about under six. But uh, I don't know if you like stretch women. Um, okay, now this is your seven. Your seven is going to be super annoyed if I do this. Sounds. 
Um, yeah, I mean, she just. Uh, I can't believe people are still making music based on like the eight tone scale and melody and harmony and um, <laughs> time signature. Yeah, Vidra Seven would never write a composition with time signature. Okay. Um, yeah, he just he just seems like this is so like from the past. Oh, oh, but Visitor 7.0, oh, Visitor 7.1, okay. Visitor 7.1 can't stand Visitor 7. I mean, they're in the same Sonic Experiments Facebook group, and they just, you know, like, he can't stand how, he think, Visitor 7 thinks he's doing something completely new. Like, you know, Visitor 7.1 says there's nothing, it's impossible to do anything <coughs> new anymore. It's so, like, modernist, you know, to even, Suggests such as like the futurists, you know, they said, you know, everything that came before us was wrong, you know, doing something totally new. It's just so, uh, you know, Visitor 7.1 can't, can't stay. Oh, but wait, 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 Visitor 7.2 wants to get on this. Yeah, Visitor 7.2 wants to rebut Visitor 7.1 because he thinks it's a bit of a caricature of modernism to just reduce it to being a fetishization of newness. Visitor 7.2 wants to tell Visitor 7.1 that, you know, Modernism actually had two waves, and the first wave. Okay, you know, uh, hold, 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 hold on, everybody. Okay, you know, I listen. I really, we really can't have this argument here. You know, I'm this. I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle of a performance. Okay, um, yeah, I still have two more visitors to go through. So, and like the, the, um, what, what it? Um, anyway, so why don't you all just sit over there and talk amongst yourselves? And I, um, yeah, no, I just, okay, right, I, okay, okay, you know what, Visit, I, I want you guys, I want all of you to like my performance, you know, I mean, Visitor 7, 7.172, 7 I mean, I want all my musician <coughs> friends to like me, so, what, how would I do this? Yeah.
if I do this. <laughs> this is the only two modalities. <laughs> Annoyed and relieved. Okay. <laughs> Contemporary dance class, 
You know, it's like 40 white people. Okay, let me put it this way then. Um, in New York City, sometimes in the subway, I'll see African American break dancers, and um, they never seem to need to warm up, you know? Like, one minute, they'll just be standing there, and then the next minute, they'll do like the most mind boggling, like, acrobatic feats. They'll be like doing double flips in the air, and that, uh, you know, that, that helicopter thing where you, I can't, you know, you, you put your, you kind of, anyways, it's one arm, and the person is horizontal, and they're swiveling. Um, like a helicopter, yeah. and they never seem to, to need to warm up. And then I go to a white person's dance class, like contemporary modern dance, contemporary dance, mostly white people, and it's like, um, like Trisha Brown, and they're all lying on their backs, they need, they're taking 30 minutes to warm up, and there's like, I don't understand this, but there's like somebody talking to them while they're warming up, you know, and it's like, this person is like, um, okay, I should be. Did you know every art piece is a test? After after you see an art piece, you have to go to the 
car and talk to your friends and tell them what you thought it meant. And it's, it's all a test, but they're going to give us the answers to the test. So here's everybody take one. If you don't, if I don't pass one out to you, just take one. And thank you for coming to my performance. <laughs> Uh, oh yes, uh, you, you can come in if you want. Uh, um, there's beer and there's wine. 